In the last video, I showed off Breath of the Wild running on CMU with OpenGL, getting performance around the low 20s. My goal at the time was to achieve a stutter-free experience, and by going with OpenGL, I was able to get rid of pipeline compiling stutters, which is a problem with the Vulkan API. But with OpenGL, I had to give up the luxury of a higher frame rate. After digging deeper, I'm confident to say for Breath of the Wild, and more importantly, CMU as a whole on the GPU and Max, Vulkan API is the way to go. But just to be clear, Vulkan pipeline caching stutters is still a problem that will exist no matter what. Since we all know, unlike shader caches, Vulkan pipelines are not transferable. But I think I might have an idea to solve this. So today, I'll be going through several things. One, the settings to get the best performance out of CMU for your WinMax, especially for Breath of the Wild. Two, couple ideas I have to eliminate Vulkan pipeline stutters altogether and ways to speed up the process. And three, for those who are interested, I'll also be showing how to set up motion controls with an Android phone to use for supported games for gyro aiming. Other than that, I'll be going through some useful settings within CMU, and I hope by the end of the video, all of you will have a better understanding with the emulator as well. And finally, make sure you have the games and update files ready, because we won't be going over that. Before we begin, I just want to say I've got a Twitter account where I show progress on upcoming videos or just hang out and talk about games or answer questions. If that sounds interesting to you, feel free to give it a follow. And if you enjoy your videos so far and are interested in more future videos about the GPD WinMax, please consider subscribing. That way I know you guys are enjoying the content and it really helps motivate me to make more videos like this. And with that out of the way, this is CMU Setup Guide for the GPD WinMax. Enjoy! Okay, I could spend half an hour going through the initial setup process, but I trust you guys on having the ability to go through these on your own. If you're still having trouble, there'll be a link in the description that guides you through this process. So instead, I'll just quickly run through several points that I feel are crucial for the GPD WinMax just to get everyone on the same page. One, you should be using 1.20.1c as your main build. Two, install CMU hook. Three, set a virtual RAM of 10,000 in your Windows settings. If you haven't already, you can do that by searching for performance in your start menu, then click on advanced, change, enter a custom size of 10,000 for both options, click on set, OK, and restart your WinMax. 4. Within CMU, make sure you're using the Falcon API. 5. In the audio option, turn your latency all the way up. 6. For those who are planning to play Breath of the Wild, make sure to have the latest game updates installed. Any other options you mess with might impact the performance, so if you don't know what it does, I suggest leaving it as default. Next, you want to jump into the Debug tab and disabling all the options in CPU extensions. Also in the Debug tab, set Custom Timer to RDTSC and leave that to one time speed. And finally, you want to put MM timer accuracy to 1ms. And with that out of the way, we can start doing some per game configs. So to configure a game, right click on the game title and click on edit game profile. First, triple core recompiler is always the first thing you should check. For most games, you get a massive performance increase with this. And from using Triple Core Recompiler alongside the audio latency increase we did earlier in the video, the sound crackling problem when playing 8 players battles in Smash 4 is now completely fixed. Of course, not every game works with this, and if a game freezes on launch when using triple core recompiler, you have to switch back to single core. However, majority of the games will, including Breath of the Wild. Yeah. 
Next, in the graphics tab, set shader mode accuracy to minimal if it isn't on by default already. This option is the sweet spot for performance without breaking the games too much. Then you can go ahead and close this window. And again, right clicking on the title. This time, we'll take a look at the graphics pack option. In this window, make sure you have the latest graphics pack installed. Here you can adjust the resolution for your games. I'd recommend keeping this option at 720p. There's some occasions where games are rendered in 1080p, such as Smash 4. Then with that, you can drop the resolution to 720p. I wouldn't recommend going below 720 as the performance gain is very minimal while impacting the picture quality quite heavily. Then within mods, you want to look for FPS++, then check all four options. Put dynamic game speed to 32 frames. Set fence method to fence skip. Turn on NPC start to fix and a 30 FPS limit. Then just below it, enable dynamic FPS++ and put that to 30 as well. And if you don't have dynamic FPS, use static FPS instead. Just make sure to only use one or the other and never use both of them at the same time. And finally, under workarounds, check these options. Then you can go ahead and close the window. So now, how do we get rid of those pesky pipeline stutters? But hey, isn't Vulcan Cache non-transferable? So why am I even bringing this up? Okay, so Vulcan pipelines are not transferable between different PCs and different drivers. But as long as everyone's on the same PC, in this case the Winmax, and the same CMU build and the same Intel driver, it is in fact transferable between us. So I've been playing Breath of the Wild for about 5 hours. I've built up a decent amount of cache. I was playing this with the 8190 Intel driver and CMU 1.20.1c. If you have the same setup as I do, you should be able to use my pipeline cache and get rid of most of the stutters that I've already went through. To set this up properly, first you want to install the regular transferable shader cache. Which you can place in your CMU folder, shader cache and transferable. Then with my pipeline cache, you want to place that in driver and within the VK folder. Just make sure the cache matches your region. If it doesn't, just rename it and you should be good to go. Last thing, just make sure you do a backup of your Falcon cache, just in case this doesn't work. If you want to speed up the rest of the missing pipelines, I suggest setting the level of detail in your graphics pack to extremely high. That way the render distance increases, textures and objects will render earlier. And once you feel comfortable with what you got, you can go back to the normal settings. The higher settings will mess with all the characters' effects and object textures, so I wouldn't recommend using that. And finally, if you're interested in using motion control with an Android phone, download the Motion Source app. Once you have the app downloaded on your phone, go ahead and install it. If you're having trouble installing it, go to Settings, Navigate to Security or Developer Options, depending on what phone you have. Then enable Install from Unknown Source. Then try installing it again. And before proceeding, make sure both your WinMax and your Android phone are connected to the same network. So first, within CMU, go to Options, Gamepad Motion Source, and set DSU1 to Buy Slot, then close down CMU. Then you want to navigate to your CMU folder, open cmuhook.ini, then under this line, add a new line and put server IP equals and put the same IP address that is showing up on the Motion Source app. Then you can save and go ahead and close the window. Now, before opening CMU again, switch on the server toggle in the Motion Source app, then open CMU. And finally, going back to Options and Gamepad Motion Source, if you see your device listed similar to this, that means you got it working then you can start using gyro in supported games. Then I think it would make sense now if you want to mount your phone to your WinMax. And if that's the case, may I suggest mounting it to the bottom half. 
since I really do not recommend putting pressures to your Winmaxis screen as it is pretty fragile. As for myself, I'm using one of these adjustable window clamp with some rubber cushion. Which I got for a pretty cheap price in a local shop. And I'm sure there are so many different other ways to set this up, but just make sure to be careful or you might damage your Winmax. But otherwise, the Motion Source app is a pretty neat addition to playing Breath of the Wild on your Winmax. And I don't feel much latency despite connecting through Wi-Fi. And with that, we've come to an end of another video. Thanks for sticking around. If you found this video helpful, please share it around, or maybe even consider subscribing. That would mean a lot to me. I also want to give a big thanks to everyone who commented on the last video and on Discord who helped me out and suggested ideas. I couldn't have done this video without your help, but otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Good.